Hey, I'm Joe with J-Rod Studios. In this video, I'm gonna show you an easy and inexpensive Mox and Vice hardware alternative and try not to ruin a $700 router in the process. So over the summer, I got a commission piece from some good friends of mine to build them a gaming slash dining table. It required me to push my skills and try some new techniques. While I was prepared for it, I didn't realize my shop wasn't. Over the months building it, I realized I needed to make some improvements before I took on another commission. I needed to free up some wasted space, fix my janky storage, a vice, and to start dealing with the rapidly growing pile of offcuts that I've convinced myself not to throw away because I'm probably going to use them one day, maybe. I made it a point to only use wood that I had on hand for this project. Um, I'm using up this other half of this spalted oak slab that I had laying around from a makeup vanity I built earlier in the year. There's a build video I will link down below if you're interested in after watching this one. I also had some strips of walnut that were too thin to do much else with. So got all of that kind of stuff milled up off camera. Um, and it felt great to be able to use a lot of this stuff and free up some room, um, but also not have to go out and buy anything. And the only thing I had to buy for this was the hardware and some of the accessories. And since Woodworker Math is pretty close in line with Girl Math, this project was basically free. If you're not familiar with Girl Math, there's a whole wormhole you can go down on the internet, um, but it's just an insane rationale for justifying the cost making things free or cost little to nothing when they cost the full amount. But enough about that. So far, we've essentially just made a big old cutting board for our workbench top. I'm just gluing it up into a panel like anything else you guys have seen me do before. Uh, and then I decided just to keep it easy and I was gonna dimension everything relative to the top. So now that the top exists, I can cut down the pieces for the jaws, for the vise, I can cut down the legs, and more importantly, use up some more leftover material from other projects. This big old tapered piece of red oak was left over from a mid-century dining table I built earlier in the year. Yes, there's a video for that as well. Um, now this stuff was pretty hard and it gave all my tools a little bit of a hard time, but it especially gave the bandsaw a hard time, so much so that I had to hop over to the track saw. I later realized that it was a tensioning issue while I thought my blade was tight, wasn't tight enough, but I also think that blade's getting dull. So I should probably go ahead and swap another blade on there, but you know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Now this may come as a surprise to some of you, but I'm primarily a power tool woodworker. I do have some hand tools and I really enjoy using them when the opportunity does present itself. It just doesn't come around as often as I would like. And when it does, I don't really have a good way to hold the piece down and use them effectively. So I'm hoping with this workbench, I'll be able to kind of expand my skill set into that more traditional side of woodworking. Here's a little trick for cross cutting wider pieces at the table saw. If you're using a miter gauge and it's just extended too far out for it to be stable or accurate, if you flip your miter gauge around and then push the piece through on the back side, it's gonna give you a lot more stability, accurate cut, and it's just gonna be a whole lot safer. All right, got everything down pretty much to its final dimension. Went a little bit larger than I planned initially, but I think I'm gonna like this size better because um, this is gonna double as outfeed for my bandsaw. And then it's also, it's gonna live here 90, 95% of the time, but it's still small enough that I will be able to move it off if I need the full length of my assembly table. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start laying out for some dog holes next. And I'm also gonna go ahead and lay out for the vice hardware itself. And I'll just give you a little close up, show you what I'm using for the vice hardware. I'm gonna be using these veneer clamps. These ones are Shop Fox, I got off Amazon, but a bunch of companies make them. You can use traditional Mox and Vice hardware kits. This just seemed easier to me and it's also quite a bit cheaper. I've seen somebody do it before. I'll see if I can find uh, who did and give them credit for it. Thought it was a great idea and it's gonna keep things nice and simple, moving right along on this project. All right, to give myself the best odds with this layout, I tried to go ahead and mark everything as clear as possible. You know, lines for screws, dominoes, you name it. Everything has its mark. Everything has been measured out with some thought, you know, can't put too much thought into it and you're gonna overthink it. And that's not good either. Um, but I'm gonna make some templates. How am I gonna make the templates? Freaking laser beam. I'm gonna use my laser engraver to make a couple specific templates. Um, this one is for the Mox and Vice jaw um, because the opening was a specific size. I didn't have that size drill bit. This ended up being unnecessary. If you do this project, I would just go up a drill bit size. This is gonna give you a better chance to skew the jaws anyways, which is something that a Mox and Vice should do. Um, but I'm gonna use a templating bit with a bearing. And then once that's done, because this bit's not big enough, I'm gonna finish it up with a flush trim bit. Again, it's totally not necessary, but in the moment, it seemed like a great idea. It did work, but definitely wasn't necessary. I ended up going back and drilling these holes out a little bit bigger later on after I got the jaws all assembled because it did tend to bind a little bit. Now with that all set, I can go ahead and drill the mating part into 
the fixed portion of the jaw itself. Now, if you see right here, if you look, you're right there. You right. You see what I'm doing right there? Yeah, me either. Now, what I was trying to show you in that shot is that you need to drill out two corresponding holes for the little shoulders on the veneer clamp nut um, before you drill out the main hole. But what I really ended up showing you was the fact that I need to find some new camera angles for my drill press shots. For attaching the workbench and the vise together, I'm just gonna use a couple dominoes and then some long boy screws, AKA three and a half inch, four inch screws. Uh, I didn't see the need to glue it together. I might not like this vise. I might not like this workbench. I might not like them together. Um, so I just decided to keep it all flexible. The screws are gonna be more than enough to hold it together. It's gonna live in the same spot most of the time. So I really didn't see too big of a deal with it. So like I said, I'm just gonna pre-drill some holes for some screws. I got the dominoes in there. I'm not gonna glue any of this in and I just don't see the need for it. I mean, these are some pretty heavy duty construction screws and shouldn't have to worry too much about the wood moving in this case, just because the way I laminated the top together. Now here's a little piece of advice I wish someone had given me before I went and bored out all these dog holes. If you're gonna be using a plunge router with a guide bushing, make sure you check all of your clearances and tolerances before you set your max depth. I think you can see where I'm going with this. So originally I was gonna be doing at least three rows of pop-up bench dogs with three quarter inch oak dowels and pushed open cabinet hardware. Um, but Obviously I needed a little bit bigger of a hole for a three quarter inch dowel, it was just too tight. The dog wasn't able to pop up and down. So I had to use the template with the router and everything. But my half inch bit just wasn't quite long enough. And I didn't realize till it was good that I was overextending it and the collet actually got stuck in the bushing. Had to disassemble like half the router. It took me 45 minutes of frustration and just looking at it and go different angles to try and get everything unstuck. I think the router and everything should be just fine. Um, but the, the bushing is shot. Like I said, it, it's no longer accurate. Like I said, I've drilled this hole. It's got plenty of slop there. For what I'm doing, it'll be fine. I'm not gonna mess with fixing it. Just if I come back to it later, maybe if I have time. Um, but I'm gonna go with these three quarter inch bench dogs, which do fit in a three quarter inch dog hole. Um, Cause I still have a lot of holes to drill. Uh, and I won't have to go as deep with these. Like I said, we just sit right here in the surface. Got these adjustable screw clamp ones. Um, so that's gonna be more flexible, and for my needs, this will be more than enough. I just really wanted to try and incorporate it, um, but I'm not gonna risk damaging tools for something silly like that that I can, you know, doesn't really matter in this case. So I'm gonna switch gears here. We're gonna go over to the drill press, bore the rest of these holes out, uh, and keep on moving forward. So let's do it. Now there's just one more thing I wanted to add before we oil this bad boy up and take her for a spin. I'm gonna add a pop-up hand plane stop. I'm gonna go with Tamar from 3x3 Customs version. I like how simple but effective it is. Uh, it's gonna use some hanger bolts and some threaded knobs. If you want some more info on how she did it, I'll link the video down below. Uh, but if you're gonna build one of these things, can't recommend it enough. Now I'd like to take a second, especially for those who've made it this far into the video, whether it's because you're entertained, you're learning something, or you walked away and YouTube's just on autoplay, uh, just know I appreciate you. It really helps me with the algorithm. If you think I've earned it, I'd love to have your subscription. Um, but only if you think I've earned it and you want to see some more stuff from me. I've got a lot of builds coming up in the next few months. Uh, and if this gets some good feedback, I will probably film at least a few of them. Um, but enough of that. I just want to say thank you. Now, time to put some finish on this bad boy. And I'm going to be using two finishes. I'm using Simple Finishes Hard Wax Oil for the Walnut. And then for the red oak, just because I don't care for how pink it can get, I'm going to be using Rubio Monocoat's Antique Bronze. Had both of these finishes on hand. That's kind of going with the whole theme for this build is use what you got. Um, but I'm just going to go and rub them both in with a Scotch-Brite pad, let them soak in. And then afterwards, I will come back and buff them off. Super easy to do. Minimal touch-up. And then again, it's a workbench. It's going to get beat up. But overall, it's pretty easy to touch up if needed. But with all that done, the last thing we have to do is just go ahead, get this thing reassembled for the final time and take her for a spin. So let's do it.
that's going to be it for this one. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you decide to make a moxin vise with a veneer clamp, I would love to see it. And so tag me on Instagram at jrutstudios. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out. See you guys next time.